Hey guys, welcome back to World of Warships. Today we're taking a look at the Vampire 2. I got requested to play this ship and got a monster of a game. I don't usually play the Vampire personally. I'm a bit of a daring enjoyer myself. Overall, Vampire has some strengths though over daring and we're gonna highlight those today. Namely being the extra DPM. This ship has the third best DPM out of all the tier 10 destroyers, at least when it comes to the high explosive here. Daring's a little further back, it's still pretty close but that extra reload advantage is very, very nice. This ship also gets that very weird smoke that allows you to crawl along at quarter speed and still farm out of it. Lasts a really long time, can be useful, but situationally, I do prefer the daring smokes. And we also get a much better hydro, five kilometer hydro. We can do some very fun smoke hydro gimmicks. That's three torps and fourth, collecting a dev strike to start off. <laughs> The Torps we'll talk about in a little bit, but they're a bit of a downgrade for the most part. Unless you're hitting like that. Pretty insane. Pushing the cap, though, is something that's a little bit scary. We do have to worry about taking damage in this ship. No heal, and that's the main reason I prefer Daring. But in this case, against a Hayate who's not ready for us to come from that angle, AP giving us some decent damage. Gotta swap to the HE now that he's bow in. And we could smoke up here, but I'm not. I really, really want to make sure this guy dies. If I had my Hydro available, we could have done it. The smoke Hydro gimmick would have been very strong. But as it stands, he's not able to shoot at us very easily. And we do manage to take him out with the help of our teammates. And now I will smoke. It's a very common play in a daring that we will make a lot of the time. We will go in, take an engagement with a DD, and then use our smoke to prevent any further damage as the engagement lasts longer. And then we use that Hydro on the daring to prevent any torpedo damage incoming. In this case, our Hydro was not available, but Vampire 2 is very strong cap contester. We don't have that heal, which I do prefer, but slowly pushing in with this Hydro is a very viable way to contest caps, especially with the massive DPM advantage. It does feel like you're doing more damage than a daring. It is very, very nice. But in this situation, I think the daring smoke would have worked just as well. So it's very difficult to use this smoke is trying, what I'm trying to get at. And I think generally the heal is going to be a little bit more valuable than the slightly extra DPM. Although considering that this ship also has this like 10% fire chance with this build and this many shell hits at a time, yeah, you're going to be lighting so many fires. <laughs> you're so good at farming down battleships. Although they know exactly where we're going now, so we may as well be firing. But this smoke crawls with you for a very long time, and it's on a very long reload. Something else about Daring that I really enjoy is the fast reloading smokes. So you're going to see here in a little bit, I'm going to need to stay in this smoke, because Buffalo is going to start shooting at us. More than likely, Daring smoke would have been up, so it's not like it's an advantage the smoke lasted longer. Although it does mean Vampire 2 is still able to take advantage of this smoke, multiple times, even if you do have to reposition. Getting some damage in on the buffalo here is quite nice, still staying outside of radar range. The 360 turrets are, of course, an excellent feature of the Daring and Vampire 2, making it rather easy to keep our targets on whoever pops up. Even on a different broadside, we're always getting that DPM off on the target. Duncan here poking out, of course, gonna go after that. Maybe light some fires, land some torpedoes. And these torps here doing that 19,000 damage is a really nice upgrade. That's how we're able to dev strike that Napoli earlier. I think generally though, the torps are going to be a bit better on daring since you can launch a few more of them, guaranteeing a few hits. And even though the torps have double the amount, 10 torps on daring, only five here. Thanks to the reload, the torp DPM isn't too much different. 60k on the Vampire 2, 80k on the Daring. So they reload reasonably quick. That extra damage and range, importantly, 12 kilometers of range. Often talking about this with torpedo destroyers. It's so nice to have enough range to stay outside of the radars and still be able to torp people. Daring has a bit more trouble with that. And our last consumable we gotta talk about is this engine boost. It is so powerful. <laughs> Daring doesn't have it and still accelerates incredibly quickly and is the main way that ship is going to be dodging incoming damage. It can still take some and heal it back though, which is nice, but the engine boost combined with that British acceleration 
It's almost a nightmare to try and hit this ship at times. I'll show you that a little bit later, but oftentimes you're wanting to stick around half to three quarter speed. And then when someone shoots, just instantly blitz up to full speed. And most of the time, you're just gonna dodge the salvos for free. And since we're still waiting for our smoke to come back off cooldown, we're doing a decent job of spotting for our team. We're over 100k damage already, which is nice, but 52k spotting damage, that's pretty good for a ship that oftentimes is just sitting in a smoke waiting for your teammates to spot for you. Although, I might get a little too greedy this game to not be in my smoke. There are certainly times here, and it's coming up against this Thunderer, where I probably should just use this smoke on cooldown. Thunderer pushing in like this, a very nice target to farm. We should be lighting multiple fires rather easily, or if he damage controls, relighting rather quickly. And that smoke just allows us to sit there and not worry about dodging. You're gonna notice my aim is not perfect with these guns. Certainly, when I'm worried about dodging incoming fire, it gets a little bit worse. AP here getting us some decent damage, although mostly hitting the turrets there, unfortunately. But the AP is very, very nice on these ships, Daring Vampire too. You got improved pen angles as well as the shorter fuses. They can do some good work against DDs, although the very skinny ones really sometimes just take over pens still. HE is still very consistent against destroyers, but anytime you run into something like, well, an Elbing, we looked at that thing recently. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's pretty good at dealing with Elbigs with that AP. Thunder here going to shoot us more than likely. Notice how I'm slowing down. And then as soon as he shoots, we're going to slam it up to full speed. And look at how quickly we can just accelerate. This is a Thunder within 10 kilometers. He does land one shell, but still, I think you get the idea there. That is very, very difficult to lead as a battleship. And as a destroyer, you can do some mix-ups against some of the better battleship players who are going to try and predict you there by just stopping. <laughs> and then they'll lead for you to accelerate like crazy and then miss entirely anyway. Some mix-ups there are pretty fun, but you'll notice that I didn't have to worry about that, right? I should have just been in my smoke, all, in all honesty. And still not getting as many fires as I would have liked on the Thunder. There we go. Complain about it, and then you get your fire, as always. Cleaning up that kill gives us our third kill, and now it's mostly just the end of the game here. Our small end did us a good service by going to cap B and deal with the enemy destroyer in our back line. That can be rather difficult for a team to recover from, and that allows us to continue just farming these battleships. I will say I don't recommend running range mod on Vampire, at least for myself. I find it too difficult to lead targets at such a long range. We don't have any advantage over daring there when it comes to our shell velocity. So I think generally you can use these amazing concealment to get into better positions and then set up to farm. That's really not a problem here. And speaking of concealment, Vampire 2 getting much better detect than the daring, or at least a little bit. 5.8 kilometer detect here, five kilometer hydro. There's not a lot of room there and uh, it allows you to sometimes do that smoke hydro gimmick against enemy destroyers and it is so powerful. Although again, I really, really do value the heals on the daring. It's one of the reasons that I recommend the daring line to beginner players. It's only later in the line, but that's where destroyers tend to get much more difficult, where you have to deal with much longer duration, longer range radars, more DPM. You get punished for mistakes much more heavily at high tier and Jutland and Daring both getting a heal means you can recover from some of those mistakes. Vampire 2, no such luck. In fact, you're punished even more for mistakes because this heal is not a fast cooldown heal. Again, notice the acceleration there. <laughs> Sub 10 kilometers from a Mecklenburg and all his shells just sail right past us. That's how insane that acceleration is. Now that we've got the permanent double fire, wow, that's a pretty nice fire chance. Let's go over to some armor piercing, still very, very strong into superstructures. Here, accelerating a little too early, but a way you can dodge salvos is just to go bow into battleships. They're rather unlikely to deal much damage to you. Yeah, we take a little bit there, not too bad. And no AP pens anymore means that's a viable strategy. Back in the day, you certainly did not want to do that. You'd be guaranteed full pens from the AP and you could get one shot. Probably a good change, although the battleship player in me that really does not enjoy being farmed by these gunboats, would re really like to have those AP pens back. Uh, but it's probably going to change overall for destroyers if I'm being a little bit more honest and just putting aside my battleship biases. Farming up this Palmer in here, maybe getting us our Kraken unleashed. 
close to 200k at this point. Confederate as well means we're doing damage to multiple ships. And this DPM is just very, very nice. Pomeran gets a few secondaries, but yeah, he's going to go down and give us our Kraken. I really don't play Vampire 2 very much, but I'm really glad I got this game because it really shows off some of the absolute strengths of Vampire. And even without using that Smoke Hydro gimmick, which is incredibly powerful against destroyers in cap zones. So we get the win here. Had a decent team as well. 193k, 5 kills. And a dev strike, of all things. Well, with some torpedo luck. And it is some luck there with those torps, don't get me wrong. We do get ourselves that nice dev strike. As for the build here on the Vampire 2, generally you're just going for main guns and then some concealment here. Running torp build, I don't think, is going to be all that valuable. The torps can do some decent work, just not worth going for here. Of course, going main battery A specialist not taking range and not taking fearless brawler in this game i did do some open watering where we could have taken advantage of that even pumped our dpm even further but i do think that just running concealment and then playing safer in your smokes can be a good idea also running superintendent can be good to give you that extra smoke allowing you to use them a little bit sooner in matches and not running out in the late game but keep in mind the reload on that smoke it takes a while to get to the next one so the matches have to last quite a long time for you to ever get to that fourth smoke. So not always a skill I'm going to be taking. Consumables Enhancements extends our smoke as well as our Hydro and Speed Boost. All things that either help us stay alive or do more damage easier. And then Consumable Specialist, again, that smoke cooldown is very long. So helping us get back to that sooner is nice. And then, you know, the three, four usual DD upgrades over on the right side. As for the equipment... It's pretty standard, we're going for a reload concealment, no propulsion here because again, those uh, British ships, and this is based on British ships, uh, get some nice acceleration built in so we can go steering gears here. And I'm actually running a smoke generator mod, you can do this, uh, you don't have to though if you don't have the upgrade, definitely aiming systems would be nice if you notice the dispersion being a little wonky at times, yeah that can help tighten things up a little bit, but crawling smoke here. Lasting uh, 148 seconds is kind of a nice meme, although most games you're not going to be able to take advantage of a smoke that lasts that long. I'm also running Hydro mod here. A lot of mods to extend these consumables, but that allows me to have my Hydro up for most of the duration of that smoke. So they kind of line up a little bit better. If you weren't running either one of these, they also still line up. Part of the good ship design here allowing you to very easily, comfortably use your smoke and hydro at the same time and be relatively safe from torps. But don't only use it as a torp safety because it is much better than the daring uh, hydro allowing you to hydro enemy destroyers on caps. It's pretty good at that. Well, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and have a great rest of your day.